The months after America's entrance into the war produced only a series of costly and humiliating defeats. Well, uh, the Japanese attacked the Philippines, and, and they told us to keep holding, holding the bag. We knew the handwriting was on the wall. Batan surrendered April 9th, 1942. More than 5,000 American prisoners and thousands more Filipinos died in the infamous Batan Death March. I was a POW. I wasn't afraid to die, but I was afraid to be tortured. So then I said, well, I'm going to break out of here. This is it. In the United States, loyal American citizens also became prisoners. Uh, there was a great deal of uh, stories being spread about uh, Japanese Americans being spies. We were one of the last ones to be interned. I had a baseball, baseball glove, and a baseball bat. And as I got on the train, the MPs uh, confiscated my bat. We had barbed wire all the way around the camp. And about every 200, 300 feet, there were armed guard towers with machine guns and searchlights. I never lost any faith in our country. I uh, probably was more ashamed of my uh, Japanese background. The Japanese advance in the Pacific was finally halted in June of 1942. We had to stop them at Midway. I was assigned to USS Yorktown which was the state of the art at that time in aircraft carriers. Courageous US Navy dive bombers completely surprised the Japanese, ultimately sinking all four carriers of their main battle force. But the USS Yorktown was also lost. I never forget lying on the deck, and when those torpedoes hit and blew, the ship lifted like some great arm had just lifted it up and then dropped it and uh, took a look over, saw about 2,000 heads bobbing in the water. And I'm going to join them. Midway was the turning point of the war in anybody's calculation. With the battle for the memorial's location over, the quest for its design began. You have to recognize right from the beginning that you can't tell the whole story of it. That's the job of a museum. A memorial is supposed to evoke memory, but it is not supposed to teach history. In 1996, a two-stage open design competition attracted some 400 concepts. Some of the most prestigious architects and artists in the world competed. The most difficult idea to express architecturally is this idea of unity, that this was one of the few times when the entire nation came together the design had to preserve the mall's sweeping vistas, complement the classical architecture in the area, and retain the park-like setting. The real responsibility here was to make a place for the veterans and the event of World War II, and to fit that particular place into the larger scheme of the mall. Based on these criteria, the jury unanimously selected the design of Friedrich St. Florian a naturalized American citizen and former dean of the Rhode Island School of Design. And there are certain ironies, of course, that someone who had come from Austria would be the winning designer, just as there are certain ironies in Maya Lin being the designer of the Vietnam Memorial. After we had won the, uh, uh, the competition, uh, I came to Washington and I uh, went out celebrating with my team and we thought we, um, we have a design and we're going to build it. And little did I know how difficult this would be. Now on to marking another key moment in American history, World War II. Elizabeth Farnsworth begins our report. The proposed memorial was immediately criticized for its large scale and for breaking up the open space that had been the chief characteristic of the mall. The style of the architecture was also criticized. 
I would prefer a more contemporary expression in, in the memorial design. However, the genius of it, right from the beginning, was that it fit the demands of the site. The association with uh, a classical language became a great um, public and professional controversy because it was claimed it was old-fashioned. There was so much criticism, it seemed to be quite possible that the memorial would never be built. I became somewhat philosophical about it. There, there wasn't a major um, memorial ever built in Washington that wasn't surrounded by uh, by controversy. In July of 2000, a revised design was presented that addressed many concerns. It was tremendously reduced in physical impact, and yet it maintained its essential cupping of the space. The plaza, with a reconstructed rainbow pool and fountains, had an open, welcoming feel to draw visitors from the surrounding monuments. It rested six feet below the level of the reflecting pool to preserve the mall's magnificent views. Two arched pavilions, signifying the Atlantic and Pacific theaters of the war, form the memorial's side entrances. Colonnades of 56 granite pillars encircled the plaza, representing each of the U.S. states and territories during the war and the District of Columbia. And within a commemorative space, a freedom wall honored the 400,000 Americans who died. The agony that it took to achieve the World War II Memorial clearly made it better, made it simpler, made it more direct, made it more publicly understandable, and that was the goal. Now it was time to turn the idea into reality. In 1942, the first American troops were sent across the Atlantic to fight Hitler's armies. Along the way, U.S. naval forces confronted German submarines. During the war, thousands of Allied ships and their crews were lost in the Battle of the Atlantic. Ground operations began with a series of amphibious invasions in North Africa, then Sicily, then mainland Italy. The Americans were, admittedly, uh, very green to start with. None of them had ever been in combat before, obviously. That was where they learned that this war is serious. You didn't know what's going to happen. You didn't have any idea when you first go in there that how lethal it's going to be. You see the people getting killed and stuff like that. It's, it's not easy. We got into Palermo Harbor from Africa. My skin and blood just tinkled that I realized my father came from here. And there was many soldiers from Patton's army coming down, wounded, bandaged up, going to the uh, hospital ship. The Germans were attacking us and dropping bombs all over the harbor. This is a picture of me that was uh, taken uh, in front of my airplane. Angio was only about a week old at that time. And when some of them heard that African Americans were flying their airplanes, they didn't believe it. We weren't known then as uh, Tuskegee Airmen. I didn't get afraid until they started shooting at me. And I found myself sitting right behind the FW-190. And I just shot him. And uh, I never looked back. We were out on a patrol, and the guy next to me got hit. I was just paralyzed with fear. So the sergeant said, move or I'll kill you. I said, that's it, I'm moving. Before I had a chance to even hit the dirt, they opened up, see, and I got hit in the lower leg. And boy, this excruciating pain took over. 